Okay, now goal oriented education, what it is. This is because of the human capacity, human um, brain, it has increased the capacity uh, in, the, in the memory. So basically, you remember more than you can plan longer. For example, let's say last year that the winter is so severe. And then, then this year, because of the memory knowledge that you have in, in our brain, that now we can plan for the long, uh, this win coming winter so that we can, for example, uh, to finding a shelter or the blankets or something like that. So basically, as with the uh, increased memory capacity now, brain can uh, predict for the future longer. Now, uh, because of that, goal, goal is automatically set, for example, how to get warmer through the winter, and then brain started to find ways to, uh, uh, to survive through. So basically, thought process is just uh, uh, activated in this way. And then there's uh, emotions like a success or achievement that has to be coming with it, and then so that you can uh, brain can move forward. Now, this is something like that. Here, uh, let's say you try to teach uh, students to some math formula. Then, generally, uh, to, before I go on with this method, um, this approach is that I have to clarify one of, one thing is that if you teach, like you can use a smaller bucket and then you can count to bucket by bucket and then later on you can add them all and something like that. Then that's going back to the first one, that understanding based knowledge building. So basically, students can uh, students are learning some knowledge by they understand how to uh, count them and then they know how to use them. But that's just like a monkey is using the signal, not building the concept. So to build the concept, what a teacher has to do, educator has to do, is that educator just simply say, figure out how to count them. That's all. And now students are the ones have to figure out how to count them. If they are able to figure out, then they can build the multiplication concept. In this case, that the students actually develop the brain so that they can, uh, students' brain is actively working and then in the future, they will have advanced brain function. And because of that, in this days, uh, you probably, uh, if you are in the education field, you will see that the, uh, what this means because many institutes are trying to uh, kind of implant this method, making students to develop a methodology. How they do? It's simple. They add the, so they minimize the teacher uh, professor's role. So what professor does is that saying that, hey, go out there. And then there's a uh, goal that the, we wanted to do. For example, count these beans and then figure out how to do it. That's what all the professor has to say. I even heard from the uh, this conference that the last week conference I went, there was one uh, from one of the uh, university, uh, I don't know her exact role, but uh, what she said is that when she is a high interviewing uh, candidate for the professor candidates, that uh, she asks them, how, what would be the percentage of the uh, you are talking in the class? And then if uh, she gets a reply saying that uh, the professor is uh, talking, candidate is talking like about 75 or something like that, then she said that she's not going to hire them because that it has to be students who has to talk. Now, and then she was, uh, if there's a candidate, a potential candidate is there, then she says she's uh, asking them if they are willing to talk like about 25% or something like that. And then the last of the time, I ask students to actually talk. So this is one of the uh, uh, attempts that in these days what a uh, university does with uh, very expensive tuitions and then actually professors and don't really deliver the knowledge and uh, they encourage students to develop the, uh, uh, this methodology by themselves. Well, in my education, it is different. In my education, the methodology is there. You actually, I teach how to use the brain so that you can develop your brain. So, uh, but in the university, they provide all the necessary like library resources and everything. But still, 
what they do is they ask students to actively develop brain by themselves. That's what literally what it is look like. Okay. Anyway, if students are able to build the concept in this way, then their uh, brain really develops and then they can utilize them in a very, very different way. And they also, they are creating new things because it is their creation, right? So goal-oriented education is developing thought processes to actually make the brain to work. And it, when uh, it's, uh, it is connected with the real life, then it works really better. And there are times to endure. Because until you achieve the goal, so you have to uh, do stuff. And achievement is a driving force, and technology evolves in this way. So goal-oriented education is something like this. You have one tool here initially to start with, and you make new tools to evolve as you need. Okay. So basically, what that means is that the, you are uh, uh, the, you are creating new tools based on the uh, first primary. There's a one some of the tools by improving them. So let's say if you are if you are the one created new tools, then you created uh, you since you created these new tools, this is thinking outside box, and then you have a lot of stories you can tell. Let's say if this is something like this, if you travel somewhere, the place that the people never went, and then you came back, then you have a lot of story to tell. So if you create a new tools, it's something like you're traveling to somewhere that people never travel. So this is a thinking outside the box, or you can grab new uh, knowledge from there. But let's assume that you learned this is a hammer, this is an axe, and then you can use axe for something, something, something. You can use this hammer for something, something, something. Let's say you were told and you learned these tools are exist, and, uh, these tools exist, and uh, these tool how you are using the tools. Then, let's say you are told all these stories, and then you are uh, saying the same things to others, then there's no difference at all. Right? This is something like you went to the place that the other people around you already visited and then you came back, yeah, I went there too. Then other people say, yes, yeah, we were there. Then even though you try to say something, that the stories that are from your travel, then other people will say, yeah, we've been there. So your story heard boring. Right? Your story will be boring for them. For you, it was new and then you have all the information, but still your uh, story is boring for them because they already went and then they, others already have the experience. So basically, it doesn't make differences at all. So thinking outside the box cannot be done. Now let me elaborate this methods of goal-oriented education and the, in terms of the impacts on the life. Okay. I'll use uh, fishing stories. For example, let's say I decided to fish as a hobby. And what I need to do, I need to invest time, effort, and money. I have to buy the gears, and I have to go there, and then I try it, and then I spend time in there. And let's say I cut fish. Then my investment is worthwhile. Right? And I made the right uh, judgment. I, I made the right choice. So fishing is one of the things that I can do. But what happens if I cannot catch fish? Then investment is waste, and I made the wrong judgment. Basically, the uh, uh, all the time, effort, money is gone because I cannot give. Uh, I cannot catch fish. Right. So same thing happens to the university students as well, not just the university, interior of uh, uh, the processes of the life. If the graduates couldn't get, well, if they get something that they want, then they'll be happy and the, their investment is worthwhile. But if graduates couldn't get what they want, what they expected from the education, what would happen? Then their entire time in school is waste. Yeah. 
So this is why that the university says that the, our school graduates have like a higher rate in being employed or in something like that. They advertise, some of the institute advertise that, right? So this is the reason is because that their uh, learning uh, isn't, uh, uh, they, they make sure that, that their learning is not waste. But still, that many people, many students will say that it is really something that waste uh, uh, the, the many of them. As, well, let's think about it in this way. If the, in the university, that how many students are really getting job what they wanted? Only a few, right? Many of them will fall into the somewhere in between. So uh, this is uh, our reality. This goal-oriented education is uh, so deeply engraved inside of the human brain through the evolution because this is a human brain uh, actually human to be human is because of the brain differences from monkeys memory capacity is different even though they look the same the actual the memory that can store the inside of the brain is a lot more than monkeys and because of that goal-oriented education this methodology is engraved the, the learning method is engraved in, inside of the human brain and because of that the evidence for that is this when these electronic games, when it uh, designed, people uh, designed the electronic games, they designed this level by level. So there are levels. And then players could achieve something as they go on step by step. So as they uh, conquer the uh, uh, level, each level, as they pass through the each level, they feel achievement and they feel excitement and they uh, challenge next. So they can actually uh, move forward uh, on and on and on and play more and more so this because of that addiction issues coming from and this is not just the electronic games it's uh, uh, workaholics like work addictions and uh, readings and uh, shopping there is uh, some goals you can achieve and because of that your brain is kind of being addicted to it but and in these days uh, the many people are saying gaming uh, addictions and then uh, some of the addictions are really problematic and then some uh, are really thinking uh, I mean saying that this has to be cured for the uh, people who uh, uh, being who are addicted uh, to something but from my viewpoints because my education the methodology is not uh, really it's the uh, way that uh, you can get out of any addictions or even gambling, you can get out of it easily with this methodology that I provide. But the, this addiction issue is not a big, uh, bigger issue to me because the ones that the people who, they, the ones that the people who thought they were addicted, can, if they turn their interest into something else, for example, uh, kids are addicted to the, ga addicted to the, to the games, they turn their interest into something like a, a tennis or some activities that they are doing, then they could easily get out of it. So addiction issues are not uh, that are big uh, issues, but the real issues is something like this. So from the beginning, I was the one for let's say I choose to fish as a hobby. Then it is me who made the judgment, who made the choice. And when I choose that activity, probably I was thinking that I could do. And I was able to do, and with my logic, yes, it is uh, doable. But the result says I cannot. Then what happens? I lose confidence. Why did I choose to fish instead of something that I can do? Why did I choose to fish so that I waste the money, time, and effort? If your, your life, as you look back your life and, and the current life, as you look through yourself and say that, why did I did this or regress? If we, you have more and more, that means that the, you, your life is kind of like, a, you're, you don't have, you have less chance to have build your confidences. And if that accumulates more and more, then you'll probably even feel hopeless. 
So uh, more the uh, regrets you have, then life will be more suffering because of this. Okay. Yeah. Now, well, that's uh, really the uh, one of the biggest issue, and there's uh, more memory capacity in our brain is limited. So our brain has limited uh, space of the, and then we cannot store everything. But in these days, there are numerous knowledge that we have to, uh, well, students have to memorize even, right? But we have these issues now because that the AI is uh, kicked in and then it can grab the information from the uh, all of the uh, uh, sources that stored and then now they can utilize the, uh, the knowledge more effectively than human even in the writings just like uh, seeing in this uh, slide and this is not all that a little while ago that Google AlphaGo the AI uh, that just one of the uh, all the best players in the human uh, ball players like a chess game this is one of the uh, sim similar to the chess game so basically let's think about in this way you wanted to learn playing chess or the golf games like this then alpha go is the best of the best now then if you try to learn who i mean which who which well uh, are you gonna choose the people the best player but uh, beaten by the uh, AI uh, to learn this game or are you gonna choose AI to learn this game many will probably say the uh, AI because that's the best of the best and you wanted to learn from the best of the best not the people from the uh, on the second right but AI already beat them they won over these people and they are moving into many different uh, uh, fields, like a uh, uh, doctor's field. That means that sooner or later that you'll see a lot of uh, uh, the job fields are disappearing because of the AIs. Okay, human brain has another function. So basically, the, if you are used, uh, uh, using goal-oriented education more and more, then basically you will probably end up uh, competing with the AIs and then eventually that the, your job will be replaced by AIs because the AI has more knowledge well they can grab the more knowledge they can find the more knowledge they can even start the util utilizing this knowledge okay. now human brain has another function evolved another uh, step evolved uh, the, from the goal-oriented education that is curiosity based thinking let's say for example you were living in one place and then you saw that the, the with this uh, stick doesn't have a shadow because the sunlight right above you so there's no shadow and one time you traveled on different locations and now you see at the same time same year same uh, but different location now you see the shadow so you're curious about okay so i'll calculate yeah so let's say that place was about like about several kilo, uh, hundreds of kilometers apart and now sun angle is from here is angle is like about certain degree and now the uh, i can calculate the shadow length i can expect some uh, shadow lengths and then i could get the uh, uh, exact number so I calculated it and I expected that uh, it should be coming up like about one meter based on my calculation. So uh, I should have, uh, 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 I have everything exactly calculated. Now then what I found out is actual length of the shadow is not one meter. It is like, a, for example, 1.3 meter. So I started thinking. What makes a difference? Why the observation and my calculation is different? Where the difference is coming from? So thinking and thinking and thinking and figure out what if the floor is not straight? What if floor is curved? And as I curve 
and then figure trying to match the uh, 1.3 the differences now I have certain the curved uh, to, uh, to make the floor certain with a certain curve and then what I can do okay then flow is not straight then it should be like a sphere if it is extended then what would it look like so this is not my story it's a Eratosthenes story like about 2400 years ago from. so basically even 2000 years ago people thought people thought that the uh, earth is flat but at the time he was uh, he figured it out the earth is sphere and then he even calculated the uh, uh, diameter of the earth and then he calculated circumference of the earth and the error range is as far as I uh, remember is less than like about 7% or something like that in these days with all these equipment that the satellites and everything that people uh, calculate the exact uh, circumference difference is less than uh, 5, 7 or something like that it's very accurate how could he do? he was using only the stick, shadow, angle and measurement and he figured out everything which in these days even some of the students from uh, mathematics department graduates from mathematics majoring math, math they might not be able to even do let me give you an, another, another example let's say you try to think that what happens if a child throws a ball compared to professional baseball player as hard as they could do what if uh, if we use a cannon or a rocket then if they have enough force then it might circle the earth and come back to the original point and where it comes from is Newton how he came with gravity and force concepts combining together and create satellite concepts so we have satellites in these days because technology built all these uh, uh, satellites and now we use for the more, more communication uh, uh, purpose and something like that that we have these satellites because of the Newton came up with the satellite concept okay. in case of Albert Einstein speed of the light time and space all together he figured it out he created relativity theory so this uh, curiosity based thinking is some of the ways of the uh, genius society and compare with the goal, uh, goal oriented education let's say goal oriented education is thinking outside the box because you are creating new tools because this is uh, something the new even though it is from the uh, existing one that modification of the existing one curiosity based thinking is something totally different materials concepts using them into very new ones so curiosity based thinking is the thinking outside the box and creative thinking really creating something very new so curiosity based thinking it requires only curiosity and questions out of curiosity that's the keys and it is thought processes basically it's the brain is really working and to make the concepts connected but connecting concept is just beginning of it it doesn't really give the uh, creative thinking real creative creative thinking is coming from here simulating relativity relative relationship among the concept connected so it has to be simulation has to be in their brain simulation not computers in this days people just put all the data in and let the computer simulating it thinking for you but in the really if you wanted to have uh, developed a curiosity based thinking it's uh, your brain has to be a simulation has to be done inside of your brain like a Newton because in Newton satellite concept wasn't there and then he and then he didn't even see the satellite and then the, so the way that the, he created satellite concept is that simulating what would happen that was the only thing that he was uh, he uh, probably did at the time I don't exactly know 
uh, how he did because there is no known trace of his thought processes. But this is uh, what I uh, uh, they kind of interpret. So his brain had to simulate that uh, the phenomenon, and it is uh, some way of genius thinking, and not all, but the uh, some of the geniuses like Newton and Einstein. We all born with a curiosity. Then why we cannot develop the uh, uh, curiosity thinking skills in our brain? Even children like a five, six year old kids, they ask questions out of curiosity. For example, why is it raining? Why a uh, cloud is uh, not falling down to the ground or something like that? Right? So before I go into the reasons, uh, let's just uh, think about the uh, limitation first. First of all, it's not, not all human can develop in the, these uh, thinking skills because it is not learnable or teachable. If it is learnable or teachable, after Newton, we should see a lot of Newtons. After Einstein, we should see a lot of Einsteins. That didn't happen. So basically, it is totally depending on the individual. And what post-secondary school can do is providing environment. The conference I went to is called MECAS, as in the uh, Montreal uh, McGill University. That, and in there, the purpose was that the, uh, the conference was how, uh, connecting math and art, science, and engineering, or, or something like that, into kind of uh, with the math together, so that developing the uh, teaching skills, teaching methodology. And there's a lot of uh, things going on, and they see that, that there's a goal-oriented education, which is you have to set the goal and then what uh, figure out something, and then how to uh, and then work uh, make the students to work on the pro uh, processes so that they can develop some of the thinking skills. There was passive way, indirect way. If we uh, if that methodology works, then we should see a lot of geniuses like Newton and Einstein in these days, but that doesn't happen. That means that this uh, the post-secondary school, even though they are getting a lot of uh, tuitions and it's like a very very expensive in these days, right? So uh, a lot of uh, tuitions and everything, but still they cannot really make in the, uh, students to develop this thinking thinking skill. Only thing they could do is provide an environment. Okay. Now, what is the real reason? The reason is simple. Questions out of curiosity is uh, ignition, like uh, you you can start the engine, but without fuel, it doesn't go, it doesn't really work. So we need fuel, that is observation, description, and experiment. But here, observation, descriptions are the ones that the education field is really focusing on. But there is a differences. In, uh, when, I come to the, when it comes to the methodology, I'll uh, show you that the, where the differences is coming from, if I remember this uh, later. But there is a differences. Observation and description, there are, are differences. It's not the same as the one that you've been seeing from the uh, regular education field. Second is that these questions, like out of curiosity, is very difficult to find answers. What we need is there's a link in between this fuel and ignition, like a like a fuel supply tubings. Okay, so we need the ignition fuel. We have them. Okay, and then now we need to link them. Before I go on with the uh, or the, the uh, moving forward, then let me just uh, summarize that what the real life education system look like. I draw this understanding based like about let's say this is like a 70 percent or something like that but in real education field it's more likely 90 percent from my observation i haven't seen any really goal-oriented education implanted much because goal-oriented education is something that the students has to figure it out to get the result that means it's like uh, doing phd or masters the unknown uh, the research question is there and then to answer the research question you have figured out how to do the methodology you develop the methodology that's the one goal-oriented education is really about if the uh, uh, 
teachers or uh, professors are teaching how to do, that's not goal-oriented education. If a, a professor asks, they are saying that, okay, we are going to do this project and find it out. If students go to the uh, computer and they find the internet and then uh, collect the methodology already existing out there and then using it here, that's understanding based. That's the primitive brain function. So basically, they even though they use the uh, knowledge, it is just knowledge because it's done by someone else. It is the students who has to develop the methodology. Okay, just like a, the uh, hammer developing axis, right? If it is given, like you can uh, make it something like this. If it is given, then it is knowledge. It's not something that students develop. It has to be the students who develop. So basically, this goal-oriented education, I put like about 30% in here, but literally from my viewpoints, this is almost close to the zero. So basically, understanding basis is majority. They basically making the uh, from my viewpoints that this uh, uh, education system makes the uh, student brain kind of like a suppressing them to from thinking. So student brain cannot really develop. It goes the other way around. Now curiosity based thinking. When it comes to the curiosity based thinking, let's uh, uh, assume that uh, well, if I remember. Uh, it correct then uh, entire human population in on earth is currently over 70 million so that means that if we say the genius is born in every two three generations let's say two generations is easily over 100 million so basically probability of getting uh, developing one person developing curiosity based thinking uh, the brain power is less than one over a million, right? So this is that rare. Okay, then let me move on to the uh, thought process based education, learning, okay? This is me who developed from A to G, everything development is from me, by me, and it's a tackling thought process directly. So you actually develop your brain, so you are, not just uh, staying in the uh, learning how to be like a genius, thinking like a genius, so you're surpassing it, okay? So it is uh, something like this, starting with what is gravity, and think about it. If you, your answer is gravity is just an object falling, and if you keep repeating it, it's like a monkey's uh, yelling out, signaling the eagle. There's no differences. I use knowledge and concept as two different meanings. Knowledge is something like monkeys using signal, okay? Knowledge is like a signal. So if you say that some object is falling and saying this is gravity, then you can say it and then you can teach it. And if uh, you have uh, little children saying, what is the, the, the uh, teaching them saying, this one is, if you drop it, then this is uh, st uh, falling down and it is because of the gravity, you can teach them. So you can teach the knowledge, but if you are not able to describe it, then it is not concept you built over the gra uh, gravity. It is just that uh, you are knowing some uh, gravity as a knowledge. So there is two different, totally different set. Knowledge is like a signal. So you can think of a monkey's signal, dogs barking, or parrots just repeating after human, and uh, concept is uh, something that uh, you can you build and then you can describe them okay so let's say you saw apple is falling to the ground and then you start uh, asking questions like what is gravity then now this question is just uh, like an ignition of the uh, curi of out of curiosity you cannot really answer what is gravity uh, that means that uh, what is gravity okay uh, the, the, how do I uh, describe it or something like that. Now, the, these questions out of curiosity or asking some of the questions to define something, define the knowledge. So basically, you have to change the, turn the knowledge into the, uh, your study topic. Then you need fuel. But the question itself, like what would we see if we travel faster than the speed of the light or something like that, is 
difficult to find the answer. You, your brain doesn't really uh, uh, find that where to start. And we know that the observation and description is one of the uh, uh, part, but we need connections. So what you do? First, you questions. But here's the differences. The, the questions like uh, asking, asking uh, questions to define something or questions out of curiosity is generally very difficult to start. So you have to change the question. So that's what thought process is really getting involved in. So change the question. Um, uh, you will see in the uh, methodology part uh, in the later. And change it uh, to make to observe. So let's say apple. And then what does apple look like? And then you describe them small and then uh, like a 10 centimeters in size or uh, weights uh, weights uh, like about 200 grams 300 grams and what does the earth look like big millions of millions times big and uh, they're composed with rocks and uh, water and diameter is uh, like millions of millions times bigger basically you describe compare them observe, describe, and I didn't really mention here about comparison and uh, experiments because that's uh, another step had to be added on. But let's say that also go on and then you, you cycle them, going back and constantly rolling in these steps. So basically something like this, you observe questions to observe, observe to describe, descri describe to question, and you amplify them just like once when you are driving the uh, uh, car initially it rolls very slowly but as you, uh, the it uh, picks up the speed like uh, acceleration constant started uh, uh, adding uh, to really working then you go faster and faster as an, another comparison is uh, it's like a uh, learning tennis if you are just simply learning by watching how others are playing tennis, you think you could do. But when you actually hold the rocket and try to hit, then you will find yourself that it is very difficult. And as you try and try and get comfortable and more and more, now you start picking up the skills. Brain works the same thing, same way. So you initially, this is very, very difficult to do. You will see when there's a methodology coming in, just like uh, watching tennis players, uh, how they play, that you can, you think that, uh, yeah, I could do it. But when you're actually trying it, you will see that it is very difficult. But once you are able to do it, then it, uh, it once uh, acceleration, uh, it started accelerated, and as it accelerates, it, it just amplifies, ramping up. So I have four different levels of uh, in this education. The first level is here, concept building and concept connecting. Concept building and concept connecting looks very simple and straightforward, but this is, a, uh, well, this is not, this is, you can think of as a warming up. You can build in the basics. Without basics, you cannot even you, uh, uh, use your brain to think outside about it. Creative thinking is even harder, okay? So building, you can think of it in this way. Uh, say, let's say you are trying to participate in a discussion like uh, uh, how to, how to uh, market your product or uh, global warming issues. Let's say you are trying to get involved in this uh, discussion. If you have no idea what is global warming, if you have nothing, the knowledge in there, that means that you cannot really talk about anything inside of it. You will be just uh, sitting there and just uh, staring at people. Right? So, now, but if you know something, like, a, uh, uh, let's say, uh, global warming is an issue because temperatures are rising and then uh, it, the climate is changing. Let's say you know about this much, your knowledge, then what you will say is, climate is changing. This is the problem. You can only say this is a problem so we have to change it and we have to work on it you can just uh, simply just say that uh, uh, you can claim that it has to be done in this way this is not discussion this is like a uh, animals just a uh, uh, same thing animals signaling because you don't you're not providing reasonings 
So basically building concepts and build, connecting concepts is for you to build these uh, uh, concepts with the reasonings so that you can explain why, you can describe why, and then where it comes from, where the difference is coming from, similarity is coming from. You can actually compare them where it comes from. So reasons, it has to be built together with this uh, uh, knowledge so that that's where the uh, concept, uh, I'm calling it concept. So knowledge with reasonings. So you have to have this all together, then you can, when you say climate changes, why is it matter, then you can describe, explain where it comes from and why, what does it do for the uh, uh, environment and other animals and uh, for the humans, so you can describe them. Okay. So this observation uh, based concept building and uh, connecting is the uh, uh, basics and it, even, even it is the basics that the, you will see that this can be changing in career education methodology. If you are a student, you will see that this can totally uh, make differences in your study. Okay. And I, I, I've been teaching, the, as I said in the previous part one lectures, that uh, as I uh, mentioned in there, that people can learn uh, the, with this method, I went back to the uh, university to teach and apply it. And as I apply it, I can see that the how students are knowledge and then concepts, I should say concepts, increasing more and more. And so that I can deliver actually lecture material a lot more effectively. And then students can actually digest all these things without any issues. And I can see that the how students are uh, writing presentation and writing uh, skills are improving. My students are writing in generally, like a majority of them, uh, similarly drop downs to almost close to the zero. Still, they are utilizing all these concepts that they built from the lectures. And then once this is done, then it goes into the curiosity based concept building and connecting, which is a uh, this, uh, from this moment, the brain is really thinking outside the box. This is the time brain started really working. And curiosity-based uh, questions, uh, questions out of curiosity, uh, in this step that uh, I'll provide that how to, how to uh, find the answers, how to move forward so that you can actually uh, get the information, uh, the, something that unknown field, you can actually think something out of it. And third level, level three, is simulation. As I said, the geniuses, uh, they could really thinking uh, outside the box and creatively. And this creative thinking requires simulation function inside of the brain. Because uh, you cannot really, uh, to create a satellite concept, if a satellite is already existing, then you cannot create satellite concept because it exists. Right? But Newton figured it out to uh, the cre uh, created a satellite concept. Einstein created a relativity theory because it did, didn't exist. And that requires a simulation, brain power of a simulation. And now, if you are able to use this simulation uh, uh, function of the brain, then you can easily suppress this uh, uh, geniuses level. Geniuses, uh, they could uh, do in their field, but if it comes to the, for example, let's say, uh, economics, probably Einstein would have difficulties to deal with it. But since the core that I'm providing the methodology is methodology, then you can add any topics and then you can easily do it. Okay. Next, I have another level. So level up to level three is actually going beyond the, uh, beyond the uh, geniuses. But the, the level four is another brain evolution, another level of brain evolution, which I'm not going to uh, talk about this much at this moment, because this is uh, something that uh, your simulation function, but out of boundaries. For, let me give you one uh, quick example, is that something like this. Let's say high and low concept, for example, uh, I mean, the physically, that the plane is flying high altitude, something like that. High and low function exists because of the gravity. 
if gravity doesn't exist, everything is floating around, then you cannot really uh, have the concept of high and low. Okay, so the the law the law of causation and existence. This level of the training is simulating out of the boundaries. Okay, so basically, the, uh, you go beyond the uh, existence. So, uh, so I'll, I'll stop about this much. And then all the concepts are built because of the, uh, the human, there's uh, some certain rules, but this is going beyond the rules. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, the end of, uh, I believe this is the end of the uh, uh, background. So second part of the background. Now I'm moving, I will move to the uh, methodology and actual methodology that concept building at this time, uh, the second level uh, I'll prepare for later because I'm kind of like a tied up uh, with my schedule. So it'll take us uh, kind of need come back later. But for now, I'm, uh, prov I'll provide the how to build concepts and how to connect concepts. Okay. The actual methodology.